Get Up Nation. My name is Ben Biddick. I am the creator and host of the Get Up Nation podcast, where I serve individuals, organizations, and societies to develop and sustain resilience and perseverance. I'm the co-author of Get Up, The Art of Perseverance, with former Major League Baseball player and CEO of Rurong Living, Adam Greenberg. The Get Up Nation podcast is brought to you in partnership with GotYour6Coffee.com, where Navy veteran Eric Hadley is committed to serving first responders, veterans, and their families through a variety of nonprofit organizations. No stranger to adversity, Eric has fused the necessity of coffee with his passion for public service. You're already purchasing coffee. Why not empower your coffee with purpose? Why not purchase coffee that not only has your six, but also has the backs of those who don a uniform of service for our communities and great country? Learn more about about Eric and his freshly roasted award-winning coffee at gotyoursixcoffee.com. Welcome to this episode of the Get Up Nation podcast. Recently, I had the honor and privilege of speaking with Rebecca Fuller. Rebecca is a dementia advocate, an Alzheimer's Association champion, a blogger, and currently is completing postgraduate work in the field of dementia care. Rebecca focuses on serving dementia caregivers to sustain their mental health as they face the challenges of serving those who suffer from Alzheimer's disease and dementia, and has committed her time, energy, and attention to helping people live the fullest life possible. Rebecca, thank you for joining me on the Get Up Nation podcast. Podcast. Thank you. It's really great to be on. Thank you for inviting me. Absolutely. All right, to get started, will you share with my listeners where you live and work? So, I live in London and also work in London. So, I currently work in Westminster, so a very busy part of London. And my role, daytime role is within marketing. And then outside of work, I do a lot of work on dementia and supporting carers mainly in how to support their loved ones with dementia. I see. What led to your passion to serve patients and families who are facing a diagnosis of dementia or Alzheimer's disease? So I used to work at a housing association which offered housing facilities and care home environments for older people. So I had, on a daily basis, a very wide-ranging view of of people in their older life. And I just noticed as an organization that we didn't know enough around dementia. And when I was starting to get closer relationships with a resident, I was just noticing that a lot of people were living with the condition. And I just felt like we could be doing a lot more for them. So that really triggered something in me to want to find out more about the condition and also learn as much as I could that I could then share that with others because I've definitely noticed that it's such, it's a very complex condition, but there's so much, it's hard to understand about it. And there's a lot of people that really struggle and find it very challenging to manage. Right. Yeah, what are some of those misconceptions that people have about dementia or Alzheimer's disease? One of the biggest ones is that it's a natural part of aging. Um, so you might have heard term like senile when you know we talk about getting older and going senile, and what we see is that term is around losing our memory or you know having um, lapses in memory, maybe forgetting names, places. And what's originally been a perception is that as we age, we are likely to get dementia and to have, you know, memory failure. But actually, um, dementia can affect anybody at any age. It's very rare to affect younger people, but it does happen. And it's... Yeah, it's a long-term condition in many cases. So the prognosis is generally from diagnosis is around 10 years minimum. So it's a progressive condition. And I guess another one would be that it's, it's about diseases of the brain. So dementia is the term that we give to symptoms. So like we'd say a headache, for example, what the cause of that is, is disease of the brain, and the most common one is Alzheimer's disease. So we hear those two terms a lot, and it can be quite confusing for people to understand what they mean, but dementia is is basically what we're calling a set of symptoms, including 
lapses in memory, difficulty concentrating, maybe language challenges, changes in behaviour and mood. And that is then caused by a disease affecting the brain physically, like it would be if we had cancer, if we had heart disease. It's physically changing the makeup, the makeup of the brain. So when we're having conversations with people who may not remember a name, not remember a place or a memory, and we're saying, come on, you, you know that name, you know that name, sometimes that part of the brain is not working anymore. So we can say as much as possible, as much as we like, but because it is a physical deterioration of brain cells, that it's not something that will just come back by us, you know, having those conversations and saying, no, you do remember because unfortunately in a lot of cases those memories aren't available anymore. This causes a profound grief, the grief that loved ones experience as they care for those with dementia is complex, isn't it? Will you share how the grief process is unique when it comes to loved ones who are suffering? Yeah, it's, it's really, really tough and there's, there's different stages of grief, I think, as I mentioned around it being a long-term condition, which I think is part of why it's so it's so awful, is because you see the progression, you see the advancements of the condition, and there's something called unconventional and ambiguous grief. So that's the type of grief that means you may be grieving for the loss of something that is no longer the same as what it was previously. So in terms of dementia, if you have a loved one that is living with dementia, then their personality traits might change, their, the way they act would possibly change um, according to how things are going in their memory and like the deterioration in them around, mainly it's around their behavior and how their personality might have been previously can be massively affected. So it's grieving the loss of somebody who is still there. They are still there in physical being, but it's perhaps not that person that has been there for, you know, a part of your life. And it's a very significant loss at that time when you're getting used to, you know, somebody and their changes and then seeing that deteriorate. But then it's almost, it's a really long-term grieving process. So with different stages of dementia, because it will always progress, that's the thing, it will always get worse, it doesn't stay the same, it will advance, so they, people will go through different stages, and a lot of people say to me that just feels like the loss is just, it's overwhelming, and it's continuous, so people find it very difficult to be able to, not so much manage the grief, but be able to try and work through that grief because it's still happening. We call it unconventional, ambiguous grief because when we think about grief, we think about generally the something not being either in existence or not in our presence anymore. It's usually something that's changed, you know, the grief of a, a person who may have passed away or they might not be in our lives anymore. Whereas with somebody with dementia, they, you know, they we might still have them very much you know, in our lives and physically there, but the changes that have come about from dementia can make you feel like that person is perhaps a different person and they're not the person that you've known them to be. So it's a very long, drawn out feeling of grief, I think, which is really, which is really part of the, you know, most heartbreaking part of all of it. Right. What can caregivers do to remain resilient during the process of caring for their loved one? You know, this is a long process, and so self-care is essential. What can caregivers do to help them during this process? One thing I hear quite a lot from caregivers is around feeling guilt. It's a really, really common reaction from supporting someone with dementia. And it causes people a lot of pain. They feel guilty about 
that are they doing the right thing? What could they be doing more? Should they be spending more time? Should they do things differently? There's all these unknowns. And what I try to say to people is, in these situations, you're not given a manual in how to manage this. It's not on a straight line. People who have dementia, one person could have dementia, and then you'd have another person, but they could be affected exceptionally differently. So that's why it makes the process a bit more challenging because there's so many like differentiations between people that are living with the condition. So you're not sure always what to expect. But I would say to read up about it as much as you can because I really think if you have that knowledge and understanding and just become a bit more aware of what the you know what the condition is causing it does help you more so to understand that it is the disease not the person it and these are symptoms of the disease and I do think it equips you for things when they're coming up so what to expect I do think it helps you able to manage and plan a bit better which I think could increase your resilience and you mentioned self-care and it's absolutely so so important I know we do say about this a lot about you know looking after ourselves and especially as with caregiving and we say a lot you know you do need to look after yourself first in order to be able to support that other person and it's absolutely true it's really really true because you're um if you're not feeling good yourself it's really then you know an uphill battle to then support someone else who might be exhibiting different exhibiting behaviors that can be very hard to manage or situations that can be very difficult to manage. So I think in terms of self-care, it'd be take some time out, maybe try and recognise when you're getting to a point in the relationship or if you're doing activities together or you're having certain conversations. Try and be aware of maybe when you're maybe not feeling so good and you feel like you need a break and just have some fresh air, go for small walks, just really break that time up because it can feel overwhelming definitely try and have days out doing things like activities that you enjoy I know that's not always easy and you know different carers are in you know different situations and and somebody might be the full-time caregiver for an individual so it can be particularly challenging but it is really really important to try and remember to do some of the things that you you enjoy doing just to have that space and just to have that connection sometimes with reality again because sometimes when people are living with dementia they their behaviours and the way that they're seeing the world can be quite different to to others. So what I see sometimes it's a bit like being in a parallel universe. Mm. So I do think it's good to try and, you know, do things out of that relationship as much as you can as well. Mm. Just to so just to, you know, like laugh and you know, have fun and just, you know, be good to yourself because Anybody who is in a caring role, for me, is an absolute superhero. Mm -hmm. It's so, so, so tough. Um, Yeah, I I think I have full admiration for anybody who's in that role. And I just say, try to remember that you're doing great. It might not always feel like that. And there will be many cases where you don't feel like that. But you you really are, even to be in this position and to be supporting someone else mm-hmm. is, you know, is amazing. Mm-hmm. Will you share a little bit about the satisfaction and the empowerment of serving this population of people? Would it be possible to share about some moments where it's caused great joy to serve, where a breakthrough is made or someone has helped out of challenging behaviors into a peaceful moment? Will you share something about the satisfaction and the empowerment of serving these people? Yeah, sure. So I think that in terms of a moment, it's something that really stands out to me as something that's been massively significant in my time and being involved with dementia is I used to 
care aid dementia group. So it was a community group. And what we did was try to put activities in the local borough where they would be dementia friendly. So we'd be putting dementia on the map. And we just wanted a place where people with dementia could go and they could go with their family members or carers. They can come out of residential care environment. And one of the activities, one of the groups was a singing group. So there's a lot that's coming up about that now and how music is so wonderful for people with dementia. And it's absolutely true because the part of the brain that is last affected by dementia is the part that still remembers music. So you really see some, what I would call, miraculous moments when you have people that are living with dementia, sometimes at a stage where they don't verbally communicate anymore, and that could be for various reasons, but they come along to a singing group, they go along to something where it's, it's songs from from an earlier era and they know the words and they're smiling and there's real expression and I saw this with a lady I used to work on the the community group with and her mum was living with dementia and she came to the group and she didn't go out that much she didn't communicate and she didn't have any facial expression and one of the songs came on and she was singing and smiling and the, her daughter said she hadn't smiled in a whole year. So I honestly believe that the power of music is absolutely incredible and I would always recommend anyone try music for lots of moments if there's any if there's any moments where you need the calming time then music can be really good for that and distractions and just getting people involved and it's a like right, social activity which ca- which can be really good for people with dementia and then in terms of the empowerment and the feeling of doing this work is I don't think there's anything personally for me quite like it when you get people that are contacting you and I probably get at least five people a day getting in touch and just saying this is the scenario, I'm, I'm looking after my mum, I'm looking after my dad, it's uh, generally about parent or grandparent and I don't know what to do. And being able just to give a few tips or uh, just a few suggestions and just be able to, to share some ideas with them is the best feeling because you really understand in this area that there's a real lack of information and guidance and people struggle because they really are left to, you know, decipher how to navigate through this process and and that's really evident to me by the people that get in touch with their, their own stories and I just find that very privileged position for me to be in that people share these things with me and ask me you know for suggestions and I think that's a real honor to be able to even try and help so I think for me there's it's a definitely as I mentioned before definitely a complex area and significant because it affects obviously the individual living with the condition but also those around them and I, yeah, I think it, there's a lot more work to do in the area, but everything I've been able to do with going to any kind of social activity, so mention the singing, there's lots of singing groups now for people with dementia and dementia cafes and dementia support groups, and I go along to them, and there is honestly no better feeling when you come out and you're so uplifted. Right. Because people are generally... You know, people are generally wonderful. Um, they, I still do believe, even though you know they're living with this condition, which obviously, as it's affecting the brain, it means that it's affecting you know their being. But these these people, are, you know, they're still they're still those people just living with this condition. And um, I still believe that they really deserve you know, to have the best life possible. And I know that there are small things that we can do that can make significant differences. And I think that's a really, 
yeah, I think it's a really honored position to be in, to be honest. Yeah, absolutely. And you've shared a little bit about how you view a simple kindness as vital. For people who are interested in volunteering or serving this population of people in in some way, what are some good ways for them to get involved and show true kindness? In the UK, there's a program called Dementia Friends Program from the Outside Society, which is the leading dementia charity in the UK. And I know there's Outside Association in the US. And we have a program called Dementia Friends and that allows you to go to a session and you find out some basic understandings around dementia but also how you can make small changes and support people. So I would say that's a really big one and even if you can't attend the session, there's a video online at the Outside Society website where you can view the video and it will just talk to you through the program and you can become a dementia friend and I think just by becoming a dementia friend that's an act of kindness because you are what you're saying is you are supporting people that have dementia so you're supporting everyone who is affected by dementia and I think I you know as I said about the the singing groups and the those kind of activities there's lots of those things that happen in communities and they're not always widely publicized but going along to them and just honestly just having a chat with people because a lot of the time somebody was mentioned just wants to talk just wants to you know still have that contact as human beings we really need social contact right part of our being and what really affects people then when they do go like have dementia, they may not see people so much. That happens quite a lot. They might not be able to communicate in the way that they did previously. So just even to sit with someone, you know, that's a really strong level of kindness that can make a really big difference. It sounds quite small, but it is actually the simple thing. It's about just trying to be more patient. It's not always easy, but just know that you know somebody is struggling because of this condition and we want them to feel okay they're already living with this and we just want that to be as positive as it can be and yeah I don't don't think it has to be huge things I think possibly volunteering at these kind of events and fundraising so that's not just obviously about the the funds themselves but that really helps to get the messages out there and there's a lot of events that take place for these dementia charities so they might have national events and really good to take part in those and just really promote yeah just really promote that you know what's happening in dementia and it really just keeps getting that message out there I don't think that and ever stop, you know, having those conversations with people, I think, is really, really important. Um, but yeah, I would say you don't need to do, it doesn't need to be huge, it's just a little bit of time sometimes, maybe just offering your time to, you know, to go and spend time at perhaps like a dementia cafe, or, they're different names from different places, but it's just a place where you can spend time with people that have dementia and just have fun. Sure. Have fun together. Rebecca, I always end the show with six questions to help my listeners understand the why within my phenomenal guests. Will you run through these six quick questions with me? Sure. Who are you thankful for today? I'm thankful for my brothers. They are awesome and I couldn't wish for better siblings. Now that we've covered who you're thankful for today, what are you thankful for today? I'm thankful for my friends and family. Again, I couldn't ask for better people in my life, so very, very, very lucky. How do you fuel the fire within you as you serve those suffering from dementia? I always want to support people that might be deemed as being seen in more vulnerable positions. I want to be the voice for the people that may not have the voice to be able to express themselves. What is one thing adversity has taught you to value? People, connection, people in your life, they can really make a massive difference even in the most challenging of times. What are you doing today you may have never thought you could? Making a pizza. I've never made a pizza and I'm going to make one tonight. (laughs) And what will you do tomorrow you may have never thought you could? 
And how can people learn more about you and your amazing work? So I have a blog which is rebettifuller.co.uk. I also have an Instagram and Twitter, so it's rebettifuller07. And yeah, follow my posts or visit my website which has blogs and videos just about support for carers of people living with dementia. Rebecca, thank you so much for coming on the show. Oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And thank you for just letting me share.